Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. I hope you're having a fantastic week, and I hope if not, maybe you can turn it around. There's still time to turn it around, make it better. So think about one little thing you can do this week for yourself.、Uh, take some time for yourself, even if it's short, to do something you like.、Um, for me, that might be going for a walk. No matter how bad I'm feeling, going for a walk. In the rain, in the sun, whatever, will always make me feel better.、Uh, so maybe you can consider doing the same, even if it's just walking around a shopping mall to avoid the hot summer. I don't know. Anyway, that's a, a nice,、uh, friendly reminder to people before we get started.、Uh, I will say that this isn't what I planned to do today. I mentioned this in an episode. I think it was two weeks ago, perhaps. That I was planning on recording an episode outside, but it's raining quite a bit. I don't mind a little bit of rain, but here in Thailand, there is no such thing. It's either sunny or it's tipping it down. Tipping it down is a good phrase, which means very heavy rain, and it's a really nice way to have small talk with English people. Just say, "Oh, it's tipping it down." It's like, "Oh, it's raining so much," right? So、um, yeah, there's something you could consider using. I will say though that this doesn't seem to translate well into Japanese.、Uh, I tried using the similar phrase in Japanese, like "Oh, it's raining so heavily," when there were some Japanese people on the street, and they just kind of looked at me like, "Huh? Okay." So I suspect that having small talk is more of a more of an English thing. I don't know if. Small talk is so big in Japan, but I'm going to keep trying anyway. I don't mind if、uh, people think I'm a bit weird. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, this isn't what I plan to do,、uh, so I'll have to keep that outside episode for the future, and hopefully we can get to that shortly. So this may be a shorter episode today, but who knows? I do like to ramble. Let's see how things go. However, I thought today we could talk about. The best age to learn a language. This is a question I have got a lot before, and this reminds me of the early days of the podcast because I would get questions all the time on Instagram, and I realised they were the same questions again and again and again. So a lot of my motivation in the early episodes were answering questions that I got all the time. And it was partly a selfish thing. I, to be honest, I did want to help people. Of course, that was my goal. But there was there was also an element of selfishness connected to it because I I didn't want to type out the same reply every single time. So I thought, why not make an episode answering these questions? You know, how to learn English, how to improve my accent, all that kind of stuff. Send them the episode, and it's a nice way to answer all their questions. Once and for all, which means finally,、uh, in one nice recording. And I think I may have spoken about this topic today a little bit before, but I haven't really done much on it, and I certainly haven't done a whole episode talking about the best age to learn a language. I do sometimes get questions asking, you know, am I too old to learn English? Or I, I get excuses, simply saying I am too old. To start learning now, and you know, of course, this is coming from my experience as a pre-middle-aged man. Hopefully, not quite middle-aged yet, but you know, getting there. It's in soon, maybe. <laughs>um, so yeah, I mean, take that, keep that in mind. That you know, I I can't give the perfect advice to all ages because I haven't experienced all ages. However. I think this advice will apply to everyone, and there'll be something useful here for you. Because yeah, of course, people will say that you know the older you get, the harder harder it is to learn, and people might feel a little bit annoyed by that, or they might even use it as a reason not to study. So let's just get right into that topic today, and I'll answer the question here once and for all. Maybe not, but I'll try my best to be concise and final with it as well. So one thing that I often see, 
to be honest, it's mostly with uh, English native speakers. I don't see it as much with uh, ESL learners like yourself, I imagine, people learning English as a second language. And that is becoming stubborn the older the older that they get and being reluctant or even refusing to learn new things. Uh, if you're reluctant, it means you're not happy to do something. You're not uh, eager to do something new. You, can, you don't really want to do it. So maybe I don't see these people so much because if you don't want to learn English, then you have no reason to talk to me. So maybe there's some bias here. But I do have a lot of friends and acquaintances who are older, they're retired, and they're living here in Thailand, but they are refusing to learn Thai because it's too difficult. I don't judge them for that. I try not to judge them, but I do have a feeling like... I feel like they should. <laughs> I feel like most people should try to learn the language of the country they live in, uh, especially if they're staying there for you know, an extended period of time. If they're going to stay there for 10 or 20 years, I think you should probably try to learn the language, even if you're not very good at it, no matter how old you are. So I think no matter what age we are, we can always be curious and open-minded, and we are never too old to learn something new. Again, this is coming from someone in their 30s. I am not old yet. I'm not considered to be old, uh, unless you're very young, maybe. But I think this is definitely true, isn't it? You're never too old to learn something new. Uh, there's always time. And if you do find yourself asking that question, you know, what's the best age to learn a language, the first thing I would ask to you, I, I'd, I'd return the question to you and say, why are you asking the question? Uh, it might just be interesting to talk about, but also consider, are you asking the question because you're trying to find an excuse not to learn? You know, maybe if I said it's very hard to learn, learn a language after you get to 60, for example, it's just I just made that up. But let's say if I said that, would you feel more relaxed and then you wouldn't really want to learn so hard? I don't know. I don't know if you would. By the way, uh, just for the record, I've had students as young as four. My very first student ever was four years old. Uh, that was a, a big challenge for me. <laughs> and I've had students as old as 70, I think 77 was the oldest I've had. I'm talking about my, my previous one-to-one uh, -one lessons. I think one guy was 77 uh, and he was incredibly motivated, really eager and excited to learn every day. And he was really into British culture as well and British accent and London and that kind of stuff. So really nice to see that uh, amount of curiosity. So it's, it's not just me guessing. I've seen for myself that people who have reached these older ages are, um, are not excluded from, you know, uh, what can I say, the motivation and the curiosity. It's always important to, to uh, develop them at any age. And I mean, if you are in your 70s or you're, you're in that around that age range, also consider the health benefits too. There are many studies talking about the, the benefits to your brain, your mental health, uh, when it comes to learning a language or really learning anything. I think, as far as I understand it, the brain works a little bit like the rest of the body, like the other muscles in the body, where the more you use it, the better it gets. And of course, this applies to all ages. Uh, the more you can practice memorizing things in a language, the healthier your brain will be. But of course, we all know that the older you are, the higher the risk of brain-related uh, problems becomes. So it becomes even more important when you're older to focus on uh, training your brain. And learning a language is a fantastic way to do that. So always keep that in mind as well. 
So yeah, just to summarize, that would be my first response is, is it a useful question to ask? If you are simply curious, I will say, from what I know, there are studies that suggest uh, babies and young children learn much more efficiently than adults. And I think the consensus here, consensus is the, the kind of decision that people have decided on, the, the, the thing that people agree on, the consensus, is it's partly because babies are so open and in that stage of their life, they are biologically designed to absorb everything. You know, that's how babies learn and that's how they are, what's the word? Not evolve, what's the word I'm thinking of? That's how they, how they grow, how they mature. Maybe that's the word, they're how mature. I think there's a better word that I can't quite find in my brain. But yeah, that's how they grow, right? They're very open and they absorb things like a sponge. So from what I know, there is a biological advantage to being a baby. Uh, so if you learn two languages from that age, you will reach a good level of fluency that is much harder to get to or might take longer when you are older. But there are a few things to consider though. Uh, first of all, I mean, babies don't learn as quick as we think they do. Uh, I mean, it is quite impressive how babies can pick up a language, even if it is their first native language, so quickly. But it's not all that quick, is it? I mean, even after 10 years, the use of the English language is not... Uh, I mean, it, it is impressive, like a 10-year-old English child they speak pretty good English, but they do make mistakes. They do make grammatical mistakes, pronunciation mistakes. Um, they make mistakes, you know, they're not perfect. So even after 10 years, they are not perfect. Uh, and think about six years as well. They're far from perfect. So it's not that different in terms of time from how many adults can study as well. And I think there are things that we can learn from this. It's not saying let's give up because we're not young anymore. But one thing that young babies and young children and babies do is they are very open and they are willing to try and try again. They don't care if they look silly, of course, because babies always look silly. <laughs> this is why babies make these weird sounds all the time. They're trying to kind of practice their mouth muscles for the first time and seeing what sounds they can make. And children and babies will say, stuff without caring if they make a mistake. I mean, this may be, this may not be exactly what adults want to do. You know, you don't want to start going around making random sounds until you get it right, because we can probably learn more efficiently in some way. We can skip that experimentation and just go right to what we know. But I think there's one element of that that we can learn for ourselves, which is not being so afraid to make mistakes, trying something uh, and seeing if it, if it sounds right. I am not the best example of this. I am very afraid of making mistakes in a language when I'm talking to a native speaker. I think like many of us, I don't want to sound silly. However, I try to push myself to sound as silly as I can. Here's one example. Uh, I think it's a good example too that I went to a language exchange meetup uh, event uh, a couple days ago and a conversation came up about these stamps that you use in Japan to sign your name. We don't really have it, well, we don't have it at all in England, but in Japan it's very common to use stamps, at least it used to be common, uh, on like official documents, for example. I believe these are called Hanko stamps, Hanko stamps. However, I used the wrong word. So someone was trying to talk about it and they were saying, uh, what are these stamps called? And I said, oh, you mean, you mean Panko? And I realized after I said that, that Panko is the Japanese word for breadcrumbs, right? Breadcrumbs. Pan means bread. Ko means like crumb, something like that. So it's very different meaning, but it's so similar, the sound. Uh, 
But I was very happy that I tried because I remember that mistake now and I remember how to say hanko is hang, right? I remember that now. And actually a good lesson, a good realization is no one said anything. No one even seemed to notice me, which could be a bad thing now that I think of it. But <laughs> I think it's a good sign, right? That people don't really care about your mistakes as much as you think they do. And I made a mistake and no one cared. But I remember and I will try to learn for the future. So yes, to summarize, there are ways in which children have benefits, but there are also ways in which adults can learn more efficiently too, because we know uh, how to learn the rules and we don't have to spend years going ga ga gu gu and making these sounds until we can get the right one, right? So we can skip all of that stuff. Um, I suppose one more benefit that babies have on their side is time. They can spend the whole day making sounds and screaming and, and saying words, right? As adults, it's very rare that we have that opportunity. You know, we have to work, we rest, we want to play some video games, go get some food. There's just things that we want to do other than learning languages. If you can spend your whole day learning and practicing English, that's amazing. I'm sure you will improve quite fast, but for most of us, we simply have other priorities as well. Uh, so that's another thing to consider there. One more thing just to remind people is that we will never be in the best position to learn something new. Though it will always be possible to say, I should have started one year ago. Um, same with you know, other things like a podcast. You might be thinking, maybe I should start a podcast too. Michael's inspired me to do my own podcast, but it's too late now. Nah, that was like 10 years ago. It's too late. I've, I've lost my chance. I've missed my chance. But it's never too late because in five years or 10 years, you will be the one in the position and other people will be thinking then, oh, maybe I should, is it too late? You know? So... Uh, it's it's never a bad time to start something new. That's that's one thing to consider. And when we're talking about comparison, you know, there's this often uh, said phrase, which is comparison is the thief of joy. It's never a good idea to compare yourself to other people, especially when you're looking at the good things that they have and the bad things that you have. But, of course, it's natural. We all compare ourselves to other people at some point. In some sense, it's unavoidable. So, a nice reminder is just accepting that there's always someone better than you. But someone else's skill doesn't take away from your own ability. To be honest, I, I can be very open about this because I think it might be relatable. When I see someone who speaks like a language better than me, like Japanese better than me, my first reaction is sometimes to feel a bit bad. Like, oh, they speak much better than me. And here's a real example. That meetup I went to recently, someone, they, I thought they were native Japanese because he, he sounded so good. But no, he said he was learning Japanese for 10 years. And then I thought to myself, wait, I've been learning for about the same time and my Japanese is nowhere near as good as him. And I started to feel a little bit bad, but then I had to remind myself consciously that, well, first of all, comparisons are not a healthy thing to do. But also there are so many things that are different between people. Uh, ability is just different. Like some people learn better than others. That's just natural how things work. But also some of us have different priorities. I'm learning two languages at the same time, which definitely sets me back a little bit. That's a word we used uh, two weeks ago, if you remember. Um, maybe other things too. I, I'm trying to prioritize my health. I'm going to go to the gym, go walking a lot, eat healthy food. This stuff takes time and it's time that I cannot spend studying. Uh, and some other people, maybe they don't do that. Maybe they don't. But regardless, Either way, uh, it's not that good to compare to other people. Uh, it's no reason to stop yourself from improving and learning. 
So focus on your own journey. And as I always like to say, the only person you should compare yourself to is the version of you in the past. Uh, you know, it will go up and down. You will feel like some days you're worse than you were before. But over a few months, you will notice that you are better. You are improving and you are you're doing well. So keep it up. I hope this has been somewhat motivating for you. As I said, I didn't really plan much for this episode because it was a last minute change of plan thanks to the terrible weather we're having today. But I hope it was useful anyway. Um, I think I'm going to end on a quote in just a second that is very suitable. It's very appropriate for this topic, which you may have heard it before. I just want to say a quick thank you to some comments on Spotify. Uh, we had on episode 262, uh, Leon said excellent, thank you. Uh, Felipe just did a thumbs up, that's also nice. This one's a little bit older, but I, I missed this one before. Uh, Aurora, Aurora, maybe Aurora, said, hi, thanks for teaching me. I heard you say often with a T, but at school they told me don't pronounce the T. I am totally lost with that. Would you explain it to me? I would explain. I will explain it to you, Aurora. Um, very simply, you can say both. Uh, it is true that the T is often not pronounced, and a lot of schools will teach it that way. However, you can also pronounce it as well. It's not wrong. As far as I know, this has gone through a change. I think I heard something about this before, where uh, in Old English, many of these letters were pronounced, uh, these silent letters, like rather than saying uh, uh, knight with a K, like a, a knight in armour, we would say knight. Or rather than knife, we might say knife or knif or something like that. And there are other examples with silent T's as well. Uh, none are coming to my mind right now. But I think often was one of them where it would be pronounced something like often in the past. And then it gradually changed to often, often. However, there seems to be a trend now where often is becoming popular again. Uh, I don't know how long that's been happening, but it is considered a correct way to say it now. Um, so if you look in some dictionaries, they will give both pronunciations as options, but they will usually say often as the first one. Personally, I say both. I, I tend to say often, but if I'm in the mood, you know, I'll throw out an often every now and then. I think it just to confuse people. <laughs> but I did actually ask my friends about this before because, of course, my friends and I, we were all in the same area. We all grew up in Cornwall in the UK. And all of my friends also said often with a T. So it may also be regional. It may depend on where you're from. So who knows? But to summarize, you can say both. Don't worry too much. It's not a big deal. Um, one more comment. Actually, I think I'll do two more. One is a question here from ARMY. Uh, BTS ARMY, maybe? Who knows? Uh, they said, good, but I want to have a transcript, please. Hmm. I hope you can join the transcripts. I will say that the transcripts are available for members. If you go to the transcript page, there is one or two that are free, so you can preview them for free. However, uh, I, I it, it was a lot of work to do. I'll just say that. Making the transcripts for each episode takes a long time. And I wanted a way to uh, give back to people, but also be uh, paid for my time. You know, it's a lot of work to do that. So for that reason, the transcripts are available only for members, but it is at the cheapest price. So if you join as a basic member, you will get access to all of the transcripts for past and every new episode as well. 
So if you want to have a look at that, you can go to uh, levelupenglish.school and click on the members button at the top of the page. Let's end on a nice one as well. We had one more comment from Fufu who says, I'm so glad to hear your love for Japan. I am an Obachan, born in Osaka and live in Kyoto now. Your voice is nice to listen to and it makes uh, learning English a pleasure. Thank you, Fufu. That's very nice to hear. Uh, I love Kyoto as well. Hopefully you're doing okay with all the tourism. I've heard a lot uh, about tourism recently and like people, too many tourists there apparently, but hopefully it's not too crazy in, in, the, in the peak season. But anyway, thank you very much. I will just end with a quote now, which is all from my memory. So I don't remember who said it, to be honest, but this is connected to the topic today. The best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time is today. So, okay, it may be true that it was the best time to learn a language before, but the second best time to learn is right now. So don't delay any further. If you want to do something new, learn a skill, give it a go right now. It's never too late. Okay, thank you for listening or watching today. Really appreciate your time. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.com dot school forward slash podcast that's levelupenglish.school slash podcast and I'll answer your question on a future episode thanks for listening <laughs>